Once upon a time, there were two brilliant women who got into technology. Each had fascinating and upstanding careers, but I took them away from all that, and now they work for Mobile Nations. My name is Renee, and these are the Girls Gone Gadgets. Woo! Greetings, yeah. Mobile Nations, and welcome to the three-peat of the new best show ever, Girls Gone Gadgets. I'm Georgia from Tippy.com and Zen in Tech, and I am well, Ashley Skeva of the internet at large, tech foolery, <laughs> mobile nations, Monday brief, whatever, whatever you're watching, I'm probably on it because I'm a workaholic. So there you go. And we have and a, Kim. we have this lovely, okay. yeah, I was gonna say, we have a guest tonight with a special guest. This is Kim and Kim hello, hello. is a, is a, I, I will say is a storied tech writer. Like this woman writes about technology for pretty much everybody on the freaking internet. And she writes about BlackBerry and does all kinds of other stuff. She is a genius. She loves technology. And we are so happy to have her. So what's up, Kim? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right now I'm working for Tekka and Amoeba TV and just trying to explain my way out of BlackBerry a lot lately. So Yeah, <laughs> I, I promised Kevin that I would not go crazy bashing BlackBerry. Although, just very briefly, I would like to say that as the details came out about those two drunk ex now rim executives being on the plane, chewing through their restraints and stuff for being drunk, I thought that was one of the classiest, most hilarious techs, like tech dramas. It was it was such a good scandal. So I, I thought that was great. So thanks, guys. So so time it chewed through their restraints. Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be so drunk that you chew through zip tie restraints. Pretty, hey, when is there a better alcohol. time to chew through restraints? Yeah. Well, but you know I what? Think of there, a few, but... Somebody did mention in the chat room, they mentioned ocean marketing. And I have to say, that is an even better story because it is so outrageous and hilarious. So You, I'm, you went I'm after this guy, eh? I, I did. I did. Well, I think it was him. Probably not. It was, there were a bunch of fake accounts that sprung up after the whole thing broke on Penny Arcade. And so I don't know if I was really talking to him or if it was some fake account where somebody was just being really combative with a bunch of people, but it was hilarious nonetheless. Hey, I just love the fact that you went after him. And well, he, he called me. What could be better than that? You know what? This is a really interesting... I'm curious as to what you guys think. So... Somebody posed this question on Twitter after the guy or his alleged account called me sugar tits. Someone just called you sugar tits again. Just so and, you know. Right. So, he, well, they probably read the tweets, which is why they said that. So my question to everybody yesterday on Twitter was, how does one, because it's really close. It well, does what, walk. What happened? Walk, why were you walks, after him in the first place? Well, he sent a message to a friend of mine who is a writer and I sent a message to her and CC'd him in the process. And then he said a bunch of stuff to me about like going back to my job at Walmart or whatever. And that set me off. And I was just like, oh yeah, okay, now, whatever. So he was the he, guy that like ripped off people making some sort of a controller, right? Well, he didn't rip anybody off. So what happened was, is this guy, his name is Paul Cristoforo. He works for a company called Ocean Marketing with two T's, at least on Twitter. And he... um basically had this email chain go live on Penny Arcade after a series of emails had gone back and forth between him and a customer who had not received his Avenger controllers before Christmas, and he wanted to know where they were. So there was some back and forth between them. It got really ugly. And then the guy, Paul Christophero, started name dropping. He's like, I know Kevin Kelly at G4, and I know, like, you know, I got boots at every major convention, PAX East. CES, so he's pretty E3. much saying, I'm I'm this big bad guy. I don't need you. And well, he told the guy he was going to, he's like, go ahead and cancel your order. I'll sell your controllers on eBay. So anyway, at that point, the guy who was writing the emails CC'd all of the editor in chiefs of Penny Arcade, Destructoid, Kotaku, like all these things. And Mike from Penny Arcade of Mike and Gabe, the founders of Penny Arcade, um, took a shine to this email and basically told Paul Christophero, you will never have a booth at PAX. Like if you have had one before, like you will never have one again. 
And uh, so that ended up snowballing out of control because Mike put up the post on Penny Arcade on the blog. And this guy basically lost his job and he's had like all kinds of bad things happen to him. And really, he's just a douche. So but um, yeah, it's been a very uh, it's been a very fortuitous. And it's really stories like that are a blessing <laughs> I because I just love seeing people like basically step all over themselves and shoot themselves in the foot. It's just so unprofessional and hilarious. Yeah, well, he implied he had mob connections as well. I think he said he knew the mayor of Boston, which, <laughs> God, it was really hilarious. So, okay. super entitled Christmas complainers. People I love this story. I really do. So, this, um, I saw this tweet. Was it, is it just the cars and the uh, iPhones? Is that like the only thing that they talk about in this article? Um, Basically, they're upset that they didn't get a car or an iPhone. Yeah, somebody started retweeting. Or they got the iPhone, but they didn't get the car too, so. Right, somebody started retweeting tweets from people who literally are just little bitches because they were tweeting (laughs) about how they were upset that they didn't get a car for Christmas or an iPhone. And it's like, how fucking entitled can you be? Seriously, an iPhone, like, oh, I'm going to cry about the fact that I didn't get an iPhone for Christmas. Like some people didn't even eat for Christmas. So suck a dick, you entitled <laughs> little assholes. Like I have such a problem with this. I saw those tweets and I got so mad I had to shut the internet off. Couldn't handle That's it. That's bad. Yeah. You know, some people are going hungry. Like I was just excited to get my kids a couple of, you know, just a few little things and those stupid little squinkies that everyone has. But no one, they know better than to ask for an iPhone or I will just haul off. So you don't ask for an iPhone. And some people were upset that they got a car and not an iPhone. And I think that's sort of screwed up. Like if I were 16, I'd probably want the car. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. Oh, I didn't get a car and an iPhone. So I'm going to pout. Like, really? Really? Wow. That's (laughs) that's classy. I like how you told them to suck a dick. Well, I think that it, it kind of goes to how um, superficial are and the, just the push for consumers. Like that's what the media is trying to push for. And, you know, now everything is being looked at with a microscope, even even your chat history. And unfortunately, um, one of our, you know, the, one of the, the great tech people that knows all the know about tech got caught with his chat, his Google log up and got caught in a little bit of hot water and that was leo laporte i i feel i I like how he handled it he he just said you know what do you realize that i'm a tech journalist i'm not running to be the president you know it's this is not really anyone's business and you know what i actually find it inspiring how is he 50 or 55 yeah good on you leo yeah like he's still hot for someone he's still really into it and what he actually said was actually kind of romantic and cool and really hot at the same time and sexy and I and I don't find him sexy okay don't don't put me down for that but he actually still well, is okay, able to you. really you know get excited and, and he's 55. it was a chat that was up so what was happening is he's he was doing his show and for one of the scenes in his show he showed a screen cap of his computer and it had his chat history there and it was on for only a little bit of time now people you know as people as jumped on it oh they loved it know, Everything that we do, any little mistake that you you have um, is shown and everyone's going to make a comment on it. Unfortunately, anonymity adds to people acting like complete um, dirtbags sometimes and being really yeah. harsh on you. So it's they true. ended up tweeting it out and it was there. He didn't know about it. And of course, this is a private moment between himself and he's quite he's he's quite out there and open and very like, you know, open about things. But he's kept his personal history very private and you know, people are like, well, is he married? What's happening? Was he cheating? Has he just been caught cheating? And he said, listen, I'm separated. My uh, wife is happy. This is not something that I'm doing wrong. I'm an adult. And he had pretty much said in the chat, it was, uh, you know, I'm naked right now. The door is open. I adore you. Awesome. You know, I can still remember. Well, she had said to him that she was naked in bed, right? And she was waiting for him. And then he said, I still smell and taste you, which is pretty intense. And I adore you. So it got a little bit, you know, what's wrong with that, though? You know, it's it's a good thing. Well, I think that, that it just shows how far people like 
will look into things with a fine tooth comb. And it also shows that technology is wonderful, but you also have to be a little bit careful with it, especially when you're running a tech show. But again, he isn't running for, even if he was a presidential contender, like he, he does his job, he does it exceptionally well, but you still have to be careful. What does anybody out there like Chris Rock? I'm sure some people do. But I do. At the end of the day, he has Chris Rock has this bit where he talks about Bill Clinton getting a blowjob. And he's like, he says, he's like, he's not, he's not Reverend Bill Clinton. He's not the honorable Bill Clinton. Like, he's just a man. Like, and it's at the end of the day, guess what? We all like sex. Like, big fucking deal. <laughs> like, that's that's how it is. Ooh. Like, we all like it. And it's just part of life. And good for him for getting it from someone who is pretty attractive and likes to, you know, and likes him back. So, I I mean, I don't, I don't see the issue and I feel bad. I feel bad because obviously that's very private to him and he doesn't, you don't tend to want those things leaked out, but you know what? He's not even, I wouldn't even consider Leo Laporte a journalist. I consider him a tech personality. I consider him somebody in tech who's very involved with it, who has an opinion. And And I don't think he dealt with it classily. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. About, Our, Eric Sham, two thousand three, says we're human. Nobody's angels. Agree. Like I, well, yeah, I think Leo Laporte is do. a human being, just like everybody else. He's he is Leo Laporte is a tech celebrity, and he happens to like sex like every other person on this earth. So I don't know. I just I don't. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, I just I, I I wish people wouldn't make it such a big deal. Um, my app is a game and it is called sin or win and why it is, is that super so cool. you ashley i love that it's it's really cute it was my game of the week last week on g4 and basically it's a very simple game but it's done very well the art is really cute it reminds me of grim fandango and it's um you have it's one screen and you have two Grim Reaper twins on each side of a fiery pit. And then little cavemen jump out and you can fling them into a cloud or you can chuck them into the fiery pit of death. And as you go, as the pit fills <laughs> up, it the game will end once the pit fills up and you can unfill up the pit by having things like dragons fly into the screen is super, super cool. And I love it very dearly. I'm having a blast with it. And, um, but really, I like, I have to say, I couldn't pick a good app the last couple of weeks because I have been playing Star Wars The Old Republic and I have n- I really, literally, barely touched my iPad unless it was a necessity. Okay, cool. Well, I have a game as well. Mine was Mystery Case Files Dire Grove, which is a game in which you take a look on screen and you try to you pick up items and then you try to use those items to solve up puzzles and different cases and it has live action video and different kind of um you know things that you have to remember from different places and you walk around and you try to solve the mystery now i actually really enjoyed the game the things that i liked about it is that it was it found ways around the stressful parts of these type of games so if there was a puzzle that was too difficult or you needed a hint it had a walkthrough in the game so you could cheat take a peek, and then go back to playing the game. So I really enjoyed it. My one huge pet peeve with this game, which I just finished, was that the ending, now I won't say what the ending is for those that might be playing it. Yeah, don't spoil me. Don't spoil. Was horrifically lame. Like, it was just horrifically lame. You get involved in a game, and I'm expecting, now I'm not expecting some sort of a Metroid-like epic ending. Like, Metroid 2 was probably one of my favorite endings. I might have cried. I know, I'm a little pathetic. But anyways. Uh, (laughs) I, yeah, really, I'm serious about that. And, I love that. but thank you, thank you. But it was just, I it ended, and then like you know they, it was just I was like, you're kidding me, really? This is the ending of this game that I have spent umpteen hours on playing. So, if you're gonna make a game, spend a little bit of time on the people that want the payoff at the end of the game because they've spent that much time. Try to make it kind of cool, kind of neat. It it really just was well, kind of I sad. want to know what happened. I want to know what happened. How much is happened, this game? How much it, is right? this game? Oh, I think it's like $4. It's nothing. It's not expensive, but again, but it's on the, the thing. iPad. If you're spending four, ga- 4 bucks on an iPad game, it better have a good ending or it better have a it, decent story if it if it portends to have a story. Like if it's saying, hey, we've got a story and we're doing this mystery case, like it better have an ending. 
seems well, like more the of a game, game that needs an ending. Was so involved that you would think that they would have spent a little time on the ending. And Kim, I won't say what the ending is, but I guess for all of the series, they end up showing this little like you know badge thing, like you know, ooh, but you've earned this badge, and it was just so childish. I was like. You know, it's probably well, it not sounds seven like um, in that Christmas movie where the boy opens up, it's, he finds out he needs to buy more Ovaltine. People in the chat room, what is the name of that movie? They're going to know right away. Um, oh, I have a white iPhone, by the way, Tech Junkie 79. Um, yeah, so finding out that there's just yeah, nothing Christmas. at the end, does it make it? Does it make it not worth it? You know, did you feel like it wasn't any fun playing it all the while? Looking yeah, back. that's a really good question. I can say that I actually enjoyed the game. It had little puzzles that were very Thank fun you. to play. Thank you. Story. Still, Sorry. <laughs> so I would still play the game even though the ending, but don't expect something epic and fabulous at the end of this game. Okay, so I haven't <laughs> had to use this app yet, um, but you never know what might happen. And it's I think uh, this is actually an amazing called app. I'm Getting Arrested which is a very important app. <laughs> so it basically tells everyone on your you, contact list. This seems like a really good idea. A really good you idea. Know what? People I really like, like this app already. That's hilarious. If you have this called, app getting arrested, on your phone. And it's really important if you're part of the, you know, 99%, whoever the heck, like, can someone help me with who they are? Am I part of the 99%? I don't know. But um, Lindsay awesome. Lohan, could put, awesome. or Lohan, however you want to say her name, she could use it. Andy Dick, he was just uh, arrested for being belligerently drunk, quote, at a Marie Wait Calendars a minute, wait, 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 wait. Stop. Stop the whole show. Andy Dick Why? Because was arrested I said Andy for Dick? being belligerent? What? So anyway, this app will let your family know with the swipe of a button. And according to, let's see who we had here. According to one user, her name is Hannah. On October 28th, she was arrested in Florida, and she was, quote, able to use this app with cuffs on. That's really important to note. So, so you could be in the throes so of an arrest. Zip tied. So let Kim, what know. happens is, is that the app is just a one-button press, and it will send in an, uh, you know, a fraction of a second a message to all of your family members to let you know, listen, the cops have me. I don't need, you know, I don't want to use up my one phone call right away. You know, get help, <laughs> send the lawyers, you know. That's right. Yeah, but I think it's far too easy to use. It's so easy to use that you could cry wolf. Which is so this bringing me to my accessories. Um, yes. Dun 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 She actually has a sky shark. I actually have an air swimmer. Now I'm gonna move back my roar a second because there's it's huge. Um, this is the air swimmer. And you can get them on ThinkGeek. And they are much larger than I had thought that they would be. So I'm just going to try to put it into the camera here. They're immense. <laughs> and the nice part is that you just fill them up with helium. It cost me $15 to fill them up with helium. They last for about, what was it, uh, two weeks. I and agree then, with Joseph Frawley. I would like to start a Macy's Day, per my own Macy's Day parade in my house. It's with, huge. With air it's huge. Multiple <laughs> air swimmers just hanging around. Wait, how much does it cost? They're about $40, $50 for an air swimmer. And it's the tail. I'm just going to show you the tail because I can't show you the whole swimmer. But they float with helium inside of them. They're weighted down so that they float through the air exactly like they're swimming. And you just go like this. And the <laughs> tail pulls back and forth. And they're pretty cool, I have to say. They take a little bit more setup than I would have liked. Um, they do not already come set up with all of their stickers. You actually have to take a good deal of dealing with it. But you bring them down to any party store, fill them up. Pretty cool tech and a lot of fun. That is really cute. Yes, so that was my... Um, we got that in the holidays, so that was just awesome. I was so excited. And they are that much fun to use. And simple. The remote is just back and forth. And if you want the head to tilt down, there's a waiting system. Now I've swam my poor little guy away. But there's a waiting system that's ingenious. And it just makes the head go down so then it gets propelled forward. So this system right here. Sorry, what is it, Georgia? What does it do again? This is the waiting system, which will make the head tilt downwards <laughs> to, to lower itself. I'm sorry. I'm a child. <laughs> <laughs> all right so my accessory is this really cool thing um 
It's this really neat thing that I have for iPad and it's called iMain Go XP. It's really, really cool. It's like a speaker. It's a portable speaker that also acts as a protective case for your iPad. Really cool. It's a, it's a really nice soft plastic and it feels good. It doesn't feel cheap or um, like it will break very easily, which is nice. And you put your iPad in there and then you plug it into the auxiliary and it runs on um, lithium ion battery power. So you actually charge it and it lasts quite a long time. And it's really, the sound quality is really good. Like surprisingly good out of something that is a portable speaker system. And I really like mine. And so I actually took it around during the holidays to different family uh, members' houses. And the speakers actually fold out like like doors, like French doors, like double Whoa. French doors. And so when you close it, it actually protects your iPad, which is really, really cool. And it's it's so nice. And I really love it. And I actually gave one to my cousin who has an iPad for Christmas. And it fits the iPad, original iPad or the iPad 2. So it's really, really nice. Um, it's literally called the iTree. And it's an iPhone, iPod, iPad dock. And it's this huge ass tree. Um, and you would go out in the woods in Austria with the developer KMKG and you would pick the tree that you want and they would cut this tree down with you there, right? Because we all have $15,000 to buy an iTree, don't we? Just kind of hanging around. And then you would put your phone in there after it's been outfitted with really awesome high output speakers and it's just this giant log. I wish I had a picture because it doesn't even now, sound good. You have so to have the photo of the, of the eye tree. So now log, okay. log, log. So you, I love the log action in the chat room. So you go <laughs> into the woods, you kill a tree so that you, you do can it's, stick your I, I have a green tech it. column. Go figure. Yes. You go out there and you kill a tree. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. And then you, the, um, you can hook, it'll hook it up with like speaker system after. Like what does this, like you stick it what, in your front yard or do you put it in your house? Where does this tree go? You after? would probably, I know, you, you <laughs> stick it in your front yard. You could, you could stick this <laughs> giant log anywhere that you want. Where's Ashley? <laughs> Suspend it from a wall. It's really a functional uh, art piece. Who's cracking up? Huh? Who's I'm sorry, it's me. I apologize. <laughs> It just sounds so like way over the. Like, <laughs> it was Georgia. How could I you not want one of Yahoo. these? This seems like a no-brainer to me. I wrote about it for Yahoo. They're five, you know, most outrageous but yet actually functional pieces of tech. So it's like a non-tech <laughs> item that still could be considered tech. So I had to put it out there for its outrageousness. Um, but that Maybe being so. said, I think um, we have actually gotten through. Uh, have we run our show course? number three? Yeah, Has the show run its course. I think I think we have we have run and run over this course. I think, yeah, I think we have run over the course and then backed over it, its dead body. Yes, this this the the shows yeah <laughs> gone we there should, and back we again. Just call it a, call it a night. So Ash, tell me go. how 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 can we find you, Ash? How can all the stalkers find you? Oh, here I'm going to do my radio voice. <laughs> Please. You can find me at Ashley Esqueda on Twitter, or you can find me on my own podcast, TechFoolery.tv. Awesome. I love that. I love that. You can and you can also see say, me every Monday on the Mobile Nations Monday Brief. <laughs> Sorry, I want to come every week. It. I don't really want to read into that, Mike McDaniel, but I do want to come every week. <laughs> well, and that is that is Kim who has uh, joined us for the trifecta. I love that. Uh, thank you so much, Kim, for joining us. And um, how do we find That's you? Fun. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I don't really have the radio voice, but I could try. No, I'm Take not it. going to try. Um, just so it. Just I'm try Lushandra, it because it's awesome anyway. It's kind of crazy. Really you know, Lushandra, L-A-S-H-A-N-D-R-O-W on Twitter. And I'm over at Tekka, T-E-C-C-A dot com. I have three columns going there a week. And then uh, let, let me see where else. In New York City in a couple of weeks at Kid Screen, which is um, a really big meeting of all the uh, – I guess like Jim Henson, all the big kids TV stuff. I'm going to be in New York working for Amoeba TV. So I'm all over the place and on Facebook and I'm an Instagram freak. So if any of you are IGers out there, you have to uh, check it out. I'm Lashandro as well. L-A-C-H. Oh, we know. I'm one of those people with a difficult name. My whole name is Kim Lachance Chandro. So it's just one of those annoying sort of like feminazi things that I have going on, but um, (laughs) it's L-A- S H A N D R O W. So uh, you can get me on Instagram. I want to see everyone's photos. Wonderful. And, and you can find and me girl. on Twitter. 
at Georgia Tippy on Tippy.com for iPhone Live, iPad Live, Tippy TV, Zen and Tech. Um, and uh, Ash, can we uh, can you uh, start bringing us out from here? This was a lot of fun, I have to say. Yeah. This was a good this Crazy, is a good time, right? Wild, here. This is a good amazing. time. You can reach us at Mobile Nations on Twitter. You can go via email podcast at is it podcast at mobile nations.com, Renee? Yes, it is. Podcast at mobile nations.com, or you can leave us a comment when the podcast goes live on any of your favorite mobile nation sites. And you can find us and subscribe to us on pretty much everything. And Georgia <laughs> is going to give a gorgeous redheaded plea because she is far more persuasive than I am to subscribe to the show. Because <laughs> if you haven't already, you have to leave a rating because that's how people find us. And uh, it means a lot to us. We actually do read them and uh, send in any questions, comments, anything you so wish, because uh, it makes it so much more fun. Yes, I agree. It means a lot. We heart that. Need to hear from yeah, it was so much fun. And thanks to the chat room. You guys are awesome. Like absolutely the coolest chat rooms there. So um, we've done it. Show number three is um, capped. Yeah, that's we it. Survived. <laughs> and as I, I apparently as I always do uh say at the end, that is girls gone fucking gadgets. <laughs>